Hi, yeah, thank you for turning on the DVD and thank you for being part of all this. We're looking at three things, three stories Jesus told uh, after he talked about his uh, death and resurrection and his return. So between those two things, three priorities. Last week we looked at be filled with the Holy Spirit and uh, keeping the oil, uh, carrying the oil. This week is the second story and it's it's the parable of the talents which we've looked at before because it comes so often in the Gospels. I think it's Jesus' favourite story. Uh, I've never preached on the bridesmaids before but I've preached on this one a lot because I love the way it talks about God. It says, uh, the kingdom of heaven will be like a man going on a journey. He called his servants and entrusted his property to them. And that's, that's where we are. We have been entrusted with, the, with God's property, whether that's our talents, uh, whether that's our abilities, our gifts, our enthusiasm, our IQ, our emotional intelligence, our mental health, our physical health, uh, whether it's our resources, whatever it is, God has given us that on trust. Mm. And that just changes our whole view of ourselves, our whole view of God, and what we're doing with our life. And, and I love this idea that your life is an entrustment from God. You have it to invest once and you need to do it for the master. It's, it's, that's why God gave it to you. Uh, and the kingdom of heaven is a, an environment where we can invest what God has given us for his glory, for his kingdom, and make a difference for the king until he returns. It's, it's, I think it's just awesome really that yes. uh, that uh, god says to you neil neil here's this gift i want you to use, use it for, for my name ian here's this gift i want to use it for, for, for my name I, I i trust you to, to, to use it and uh, i'll give you all that you need to, to use it and just it's, it's very it's very isn't it you know that god just gives you these things uh, to entrust you with it you know he will use you through it and what a prison he just he wants to use all of us yeah you know in, in that so uh, absolutely and and god in the story i mean god it says he goes off on a journey um he went on his journey and and it's the it, he didn't say use the gifts it's just he he just leaves us to it yeah. and and i you know i don't believe that for a minute i believe god is with me when i'm serving someone or when i'm praying for someone or when, when I'm preaching but actually the story is really up to us yeah. what we do with the gifts that God has given but they are an entrustment from God he's risked all of that stuff on us and uh, the God who who you know takes a big chance on us and what he has entrusted to us and, and that's so important and and then we get from the story the obvious truth that it's not equal. Unfortunately, you know, to one he gave five, to another he gave two, and to another he gave one each according to his ability. Uh, but the different measure of the gifting that you have doesn't stop the responsibility for using what you have for the kingdom. And, and what's interesting is that the guy who has two, by the end of the story, because he's used it, has nearly got as much as the one who had five. Um, because he had four at the end of it, and obviously in that time, the guy who had five has multiplied it as his own as well. But God wants us to use what we have for his kingdom, and that's an awesome responsibility, and something that God holds us accountable for. And, you know, he, they, he came to, uh, when he comes back, he comes to get an accounting, to settle accounts with them. There will be a settling of accounts, and it, it'll be what have you done with the gifts that I've given you? I think. I think also. I think you know, the more the the, 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 the more often we use our gifts, the more we become confident yeah. uh, in, in our gifts, and the more we see Jesus uh, at, at work. You know, I, I'm I'm still getting um, practicing my, my, my prophetic. You know, but I'm, I'm just getting more and more into it, and the more and more I'm, I'm practicing, the more I'm seeing Jesus Absolutely. do things. And, and it was great last night when you went around yeah, the room exactly. and just prophesied yeah, over yeah, everybody yeah, in the room. Definitely. And just there was brilliant. once or twice when I thought, is he, has he got something? Yeah. <laughs> so I was praying in tongues for you <laughs> while we were doing it. But it was great, yeah. and you had something for everybody. Yeah. And and that is, you know, that you didn't have that a couple of years no, ago. Exactly. And and that's I'm not to that level. Yeah. And and that's yeah, yeah just definitely. a great example. Great example. The um, with the accounting, they, the, the verdict is to the bloke who had five and gets five more, to the person who had two and gets two more, the verdict is well done, 
good and faithful servant. And this is a bit of a bugbear of mine, but because often I get the impression that people in church don't like the idea of success, particularly successful churches, and and they say, oh, we're not called to be successful, we're called to be faithful, which of course is true. But here the faithful one is the one who's multiplied the talents. The faithful one is the one who's used their gifts, and as Ian said, as you use it, it multiplies. Uh, and, and that's faithfulness. Yeah. Faithfulness isn't keeping our head down and trying to stay pure. Faithfulness is using the gifts that God has given us to, to see them multiplied. Faithfulness is taking that step to prophesy yeah. around the room or to say that thing at that business meeting at, at work or to uh, knock on your neighbor's door and invite them to an to event. Faithfulness is, is carrying the gift that you have to teach the kids or welcome or whatever it is and using it. That's faithfulness. Yeah. And why wouldn't you want to use it? <laughs> yeah, it's true. You know, yeah. and yeah. I forgot it, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so they get rewarded, and the reward, uh, interestingly, is more responsibility. Uh, you know, come and share them your master's happiness. That's a great thing, isn't it? Um, but I will put you in charge of many things. You've been faithful in a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. There's something about increased responsibility. And I, I, my challenge, as I said on Sunday, is to... If you're helping with something, step up and lead it. Mm. Take a bit more responsibility, because that's your reward. Your reward for serving well at the soup run is to organize the soup run and take responsibility for the soup run. Your reward for serving well in the Adventurers or in Crash is to, to step up to take responsibility for that, or maybe to take responsibility for another group. You know, serving and blessing and helping is, is great, but the reward for doing that, the multiplication will be responsibility. And, and that's a serious thing that God wants to give you. And uh, he's entrusting that to you. Yeah, I think it's just to, to remember, you know, that uh, we all have gifts. God has given us every single one uh, a gift. We're all called into in, in, in ministry to, to, to serve him, to, to bring glory uh, to, to his name. And um, as, as I said before, you know, what, it's, it's important that, that we use our God-given gifts, you know, uh, I've got different gifts to you and, and vice versa, you, 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 yours very well, hopefully I use mine very, very well, you know, and uh, just want to encourage you that you have gifts, yeah. you know, please, please, Jesus has given you gifts to use for his glory, you know, it may be sometimes up front, it may be behind the, 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 the scenes, you know, man may not see it, but by the God sees it, yeah. and uh, he sees you working. Yeah. And, uh, the last thing just to say, the condemnation of the person who didn't is just so strong. Mm. Um, master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man. And the master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. Which is a horrible thing for God to say to us, isn't it? Wicked, lazy servant. So you knew a harvest where you hadn't, hadn't sown and gather where I haven't scattered seed. That's not God at all. God harvests a lot less than he sows. Mm. He scatters seed a lot less than he harvests. God is a good God who's willing to extravagantly waste seed, mm. who, who harvests very little from what he's sown into me. Um, but, but as we invest our gifts, we please him. And a, a view of God that says you're a hard man, um, that you're a hard taskmaster, that you always want more than you give us, that you always want to extract the last bit from us. If that's our view of God, it's hard to serve. But if our view of God is a loving father who is pleased when we go for it, make a difference, take a risk, try it out. If he's pleased with that, then, then we can begin to do that. And God will reward you for it and your gifts will multiply. Amen. Brilliant. See you in a bit. Have a good week. And uh, I hope you have a good time as you discuss this, that, this stuff and stir up the gifts that are in each other tonight. Bless you. See you in a bit. Bye-bye.